This slide outlines the classification process of a section. First, you need to determine the width to thinness ratio. Classify the parameter epsilon. Determine the class of the element based on the limiting value of thickness ratio. And classify the complete cross section according to the least favorable classification. Eurocode provides guidelines for you to do classification in table 5.2. This table consists of three parts. This is sheet 1, sheet 2, and sheet 3. Sheet 1 gives you the details for the internal compression part. Sheet 2 is for the outstanding flank. And sheet 3 is for the angle and turbular section. The graphical representations of the internal component parts dimensions are given here. Based on the dimensions given, you may obtain the value from the table of properties of the section. As you have obtained the C and T value, divide it in C to T ratio. The first column here represent the classes. Class 1, Class 2 and Class 3. The limiting C per T ratios are given here. If the C per T ratio obtained from the graphical representation here is less than the range of class 1, the web is considered as class 1. If not, you will check the class 2 range. If the class 2 is exceeded, you will check the class 3. If class 3 is exceeded, then you will know that the section is class 4. Simply say, class 1 should not be greater than this limit. Class 2 should not be more than this limit. And class 3 should not be higher than this limit. It's if the limits of the class 3 is exceeded, you will consider the section as class 4. There are three columns here. It is stated that the first column is meant for the part subjected to bending. The second column is for compression. And the third column is the combination of bending and compression. Under normal circumstances, beams are subjected to bending and very subjected to axial compression. Columns are normally subjected to compression. For the member with both bending and compression exists, then this column will be used. The limit varies according to the type of the stress acting on the member. The last row here represents the parameter epsilon. The epsilon is given by this equation, which is the square root of 235 divided by Fy. The table computed the epsilon in accordance to different FY. This table is meant for the outstanding flanks. The relevant dimensions are given here. Again, you may check the section property of the material and try to acquire the relevant value. To get the ratio, divide the C with the T. This ratio is compared with the limits given in these columns.
if the seed per T ratio is less than this limit, class 1 is considered. Else, you will have to check with this row of limits. And if it is less than this, class 2 is considered. If not, you will check for class 3. If it is less than that, class 3 is considered. If not, it will be class 4. As for the outer flank, the first column represent the entire flank is subjected to compression. The second condition represents a combination of bending and compression of the member, where the tip of the flank is subjected to compression and the tip of the flange is subjected to tension. The positive value represents compression. Again, the parameter epsilon is given here. This table gives you the specification of classifications for angles and tubular section. The angle is always considered as class 3. If it is not class 3, that means it will be class 4. As for the tubular section, similar principle apply for you to check class 1, class 2, class 3, and then for you to determine if all of them doesn't fulfill, then it will be class 4. It is noted that here is epsilon square. So the parameter of epsilon and epsilon squares is given here. For determining the C and T, the graphical presentation is given in table 5.2. According to the definition of Eurocode, the series of equations are given here. C means the H minus 2 T flan minus 2 radius top and bottom as indicated here. The T here represents the T of the web. As for the C here, it means a B minus thickness of the flank minus 2 radius and divided by 2. The T here represents the thickness of the flank. With that, you don't need to memorize the equation. However, it is noted that you need to get the section property for a table which is as per given by BS4. The set of symbols used is slightly different than Eurocode. When you use the table, always refer to table 5.2 of the Eurocode for you to work out the C and T. The same principles applied. You do not need to memorize the equation.